The 2021 Formula One World Championship. One of the most exciting yet controversial seasons in Formula One history. The story of two teams, two cars, and most importantly, two men. A seven time world champion and one of the true greats of Formula One, up against arguably one of the most naturally talented drivers we have seen for decades. This season had many memorable moments. We saw brake testing in Saudi Arabia, on track hugs at Monza. We even saw a Williams on the front row at Spa, and not to mention some very creative rule changing in Abu Dhabi, but let's not go there. But the moment I want to talk about was easily the most memorable for me, and it has led to one of my most ambitious car collecting projects yet. This is your captain of MBW Cards, I hope you enjoy this video. It was Sunday 18th of July 2021. The UK had just come out of yet another COVID lockdown and the Silverstone circuit in Toaster played host to a mass of over 140,000 people for the British Grand Prix. Even for a British July, this was uncharacteristically hot at 35 degrees Celsius and an absolute nightmare to work in. My brother and I were part of a track management team that were helping to keep things moving over the weekend. Having been to my first race in 2003, it was surreal to be behind the scenes and helping. We even helped close the pit lane up at the end and got up and close and personal with the cars, which was an amazing experience. Anyway, enough about that. 3pm approached a sun scored tarmac at this legendary circuit, which meant it was time to race. Verstappen had got the Battle of Hamilton so far in the season, and today was no different, the drivers lining up first and second, respectively. The lights went out, and what would unfold was easily one of the most dramatic opening laps I've ever seen. Hamilton threw everything at Verstappen on the opening lap with the Dutchman resisting his advances into Brooklands but compromising his exit from Woodcut. This allowed Hamilton to get a run on him into Cops, with the Mercedes driver keeping his nose up the inside as Verstappen swooped to take the corner. In what I would call a racing incident, some of you may disagree, let us know down in the comments, the pair collided and the Red Bull flew off into the barriers at high speed. Verstappen was battered and bruised from the 51G impact, being taken to the hospital nearby for precautionary checks as a result. As it happened, all you heard was a collective gasp around the 140,000 plus strong crowd followed by a short, stunned silence. Hamilton survived the incident but was overtaken by the Ferrari of Leclerc in the aftermath. With the race red flagged, Hamilton was able to get the damage to his car repaired and resume the race. After serving a 10 second time penalty for the collision, he hunted down the leading Charles Leclerc and passed him to pick up the win and gain a massive 26 points back on Verstappen. Lewis rolled his tired looking Mercedes into the pits and hoisted the Union Jack aloft. Regardless of who you thought was at fault, Lewis had won this battle and this now had become a war. Fun fact, that guy in the yellow high vis in the background, that's me. How cool is that? This was such an incredible race for me, it will always be one of my fondest F1 memories and I will take any chance in collecting things to remember it. Fast forward to December 2022, which marked the release of Top's 2022 season F1 products. This channel was only seven months old at this point, and while being aware of the Formula 1 car market, I hadn't yet made the decision to dabble in it. While doing some research, I found that this was one of the cars they were featuring, which shows the exact picture I was probably 10 feet behind. I knew I had to try and collect as many parallels as I could. They released this set in flagship, chrome, chrome light, and chrome sapphire. Interestingly though, for 2023 Topps F1 product, which is just around the corner, they seem to have dropped flagship and chrome light, which I'm not sure how I feel about. It seems to take away some of the accessibility for the product because they were on the cheaper end, uh, but we'll have to see what that does to, to values of cards and, and pull rates and such and such. Flagship was the entry level version, focusing on the paper cards with a number of different parallels, 12 to be exact. This set was presented in a hobby or a blaster format and focused on the chase for relic cards, be that base or sequentially numbered. So, what I will show now is the stack of these that I've got so far. Uh, so we have the base, this does count towards the sort of collection, but that's, that's the first card. We have the rainbow foil. We have the aqua, so this was to 199. Was, is. We have the fuchsia, which is number 2, 150. We have the blue, which is number 2, 99. We have the gold, that's number 2, 50. And the orange, that's number 2, 25. So as you can see, we're not missing very many from that one. We're, we're over halfway. Uh, of course, no um, no one of one, which is going to be the uh, the painful bit to uh, to pick up. You then 
might move up to the more expensive side with a mid-level product like Chrome and Chrome Lite. And Chrome could be mid to high level, but we'll, we'll go with mid-level for now. So this did away with the relics, um, added a chance for driver and team principal autographs, usually uh, in the hobby boxes, um, one in two boxes. Chrome Lite, it was never confirmed. I don't think you could get them in those boxes, but you know, um, if you know otherwise, let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, this gave the cards a premium chromium look over the paper from Flagship. It also induced, introduced 27 different parallels to collect. Uh, this is where things get very serious, obviously. Um, Chrome Light has been historically good to us on this channel, though. Go check out our video we did back on this product in February 2023. So, we have a look at the Chrome slash Chrome Light stack. It is a bit bigger, but obviously there's a lot more parallels. So we do have the base one there. We have the refractor. The checkered flag refractor, so that's not numbered. The ray wave refractor, that's a light exclusive, that's not numbered either. We have the red and orange uh, shorter print parallel. These are rumored to be numbered to a print run of around 100. Um, I don't know how true that is because they're not actually numbered on the card. We have a purple, so that was to 399. The purple checker to 199. And then this I managed to get for an absolute steal. Um, I won't tell you how much I paid for it because I can't quite believe it myself, but to 25, the orange chrome. Now, chrome does carry more of a value than um, the paper version, so to get this for the price I did was a fantastic uh, coup for this little project we've got going on. Uh, yeah, that takes us to the more expensive bit now, which is chrome sapphire. Now, this is a premium format, which gave all the cards in the set an atomic finish, that top's atomic refractor look, along with the usual chromium technology. This introduced another 10 parallels. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Sapphire. Um, we haven't opened it on the channel, uh, hence, you know, that's the reason. Um, there is zero chance for autographs and it is very, very pricey, in my opinion. However, we have picked up a few of the Sapphire parallels, so this is the base. Uh, don't get me wrong, they're beautiful cards, but the, it, the, the price point is just way too much for me. Um, yeah, what, what you watch, we'll open it soon. I'll change my mind. Uh, we have the Charteroos, I think that's called, number two, 199. I do, I do think some of these uh, parallels sound like names of cheese. And uh, then we have the Aqua to 99. I do have two others in my US shipping box. Um, I believe they're number two, 75. And I can't remember what the other one is, but there, there, there are two, two others to go with these three cards here. So, including the three base cards and excluding the printing plates, which I'm not gonna, which I'm not gonna get uh, for anyone that doesn't know, printing plates are what they use to manufacture the uh, the cards uh, in the factory, and they put these into the packs at the end of the at the end of the run. I don't count them um, towards the sort of rainbow hunt, as it were. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the only that's the only reason really. Uh, so, what I'm going to go show now is, well, out of the 50, yes, yeah, so excluding the printing plates, there are 52 parallels in total for this card. Now, my absolute main aim is to get every single one of these. It's going to be a long run. It's going to be a very expensive run. Um, you know, this isn't the best driver to choose when you're trying to pick up very low numbered cards. Um, but I think, so let's have a count up, shall we, of all the... Uh, of all the parallels so we have 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 and then we have two in our us shipping box so we're, we've got 20 of the 52 so we're approaching the halfway mark um yeah it, it, don't get me wrong this is more than i ever thought i would get for this and this is what has sort of spurred me to carry on carry on with this as a large project um yeah, I mean, the difficult thing will be the multiple one of ones. Uh, I've never seen any available, but we'll, I guess we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. Please, a word of advice from the captain at EBW. If you are going to collect a set of parallels, if you are going to rainbow hunt, start with the one of one if you can, uh, unless you just are going for punishment and do what I'm doing and start backwards. It's key to remember that the cards are a lot more available through the US secondhand markets like eBay or ComC, but. I'm trying to get as many over in the UK to support local collectors, such as myself. 
Uh, this chase will probably mean I have to start shopping on US sites to hunt down the last remaining cards. So if any of you have any leads on the short print ones, uh, the five, I've seen a couple of fives uh, floating around on eBay at times in PSA 10s, and, and, and I'm not a graded collector. So the, the, the sad thing is if I was to have the money to buy an out of ten, um, a PSA 10 out of 5, sorry, like a red refractor, I would crack it. And I just can't do that to somebody because there are PSA 10 Hamilton collectors out there. Uh, but yeah, any leads, uh, if you let us know through Instagram or YouTube, that would be a huge help. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy something a little bit different today. Um, as I said, I'm a massive F1 fan, and you know I'll be trying to open up some older stuff. I mean, I know there isn't much of it around, but I'm always trying to expand my collection. And of course, we're just around the corner from 2023 product as well, uh, which we'll be covering for, for definite. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.